Good evening and welcome to the uh, October meeting of the Board of Fire Commissioners. This meeting followed our budget meeting we just had, so we're starting relatively late. So we're going to try to move through the regular meeting at a fairly clip at a fairly quick pace. It's already almost 9:30, and we started our budget meeting at 7:30. So uh, I'm going to have a salute to the flag, and then we'll start the meeting, and we'll do that. Okay. So, as I just said, we just had, we just had our regular budget meeting. Uh, we're not going to go into executive session. We're just going to move right through the budget. This cop, excuse me. Um, we're going to move right through the agenda. There's copies of the uh, agenda on the front counter up here. Um, I'm going to skip uh, adopting me uh, minutes of the previous meeting and move to chairman's remarks. Um, we just had a complete budget hearing. We went over the um, 2014 budget. We approved a budget and adopted a budget. It calls for just under a 5% uh, tax increase, including certiorities uh, adjustments. So, or, or, or um, so it's, a, um, so it's just under 5%, 88 basis points, we believe, will be from the change in the tax base. Um, during the month, we went out for an RFP for a new auditor. Uh, so that went out. We did it now, so hopefully we'll have somebody by December. We'll have a new auditing firm for next, when they will be auditing 2013 um, numbers. We also went out for an RFP for new generators for three of the firehouses, and that went out this month. We did the completed the budget process this month, so um, we're quite busy, and we're going to move next into the election process. As many people already know, um, the governor signed the election law change to move the fire district election next year, not this year, till 2000, to uh, November. This year, our fire district election will be held on December 10th, I believe, um, Tuesday, December 10th, and we'll have a special meeting probably in the next week to discuss uh, the mechanics of the typical December election. So we're going to have a typical December fire district election. So on a cold, snowy night again this year, you can come out and vote for your fire commissioner. Good and stuff. hopefully that'll be the last time you'll have to do that in December. And so we would like to thank everybody who was involved in that process. We had a number of citizens, Mayor Marvin, um, help us in that process of changing it. And so we thank them, but this December, you still have to come out and vote for the last time. Um, I'll end my remarks there and move to a uh, fire activity report, uh, Chief Brogan. Yes, Commissioner, month of September, uh, total alarms for the month were 280, uh, seven of which were fire related, a lot of EMS rescue. Uh, we did provide mutual aid on one occasion and we received it on one occasion. That was actually up in the north end. It was more of a hazardous condition with partial collapse that Captain Dempsey and Group 2 handled with a little help from uh, Scarsdale with their tower ladder. Uh, shop report uh, was submitted uh, primarily regular maintenance uh, with most of the significant repairs having been completed. Uh, if you recall last month, we had a couple of pumpers that were out because of brake issues. That's all been cleared up. All apparatus is now in service. Uh, Specifications for a new duty officer vehicle have been updated and tweaked and ready for legal cover to go out to bid. We just need to get that legal cover from council put together, and that should, that's all good to go. Um, as we've heard in the budget, fire prevention remains very busy and uh, also got quite a jump on this month's, um, this month being October Fire Prevention Month, they actually got started back in September with prevention details and presentations. They also participated in the annual Touch a Truck event held at Immaculate Conception Grounds, uh, utilizing the smoke trailer. And we also had fire apparatus come and go during the day. Because of the good weather and it's also catching on, it was actually extremely well attended. And they, they barely had a break uh, for the whole course of the day. So Tommy and Larry doing a great job with that. Uh, arrangements, arrangements are also uh, been put in place or are being put in place for familiarizations 
for the individual uh, firefighters while they're in service, specifically Bronxville schools that's recently gone through um, or undergone some recent renovation work. So uh, fire prevention, Lieutenant Pinterval has been putting that in place, arranging for the individual groups to go through like after school hours and what have you. Uh, the same thing would do similar with the other schools, but as you're aware, Bronxville's recently had a lot of work done, so um, it'll be a good idea uh, to get in there. And he has been working on that, and the arrangements are in place. So that'll that'll be happening, you know, really any time. He, he's given it, given uh, notice to the captains to uh, just let them know when they'd like to do it, and he'll arrange with the uh, Bronxville Schools, the facilities manager, Mr. Keogh. What the chief is mentioning there is we realize the importance of the schools and the fact that, the, like in the Bronxville School, it's a, it covers all, it's one building for um, elementary, middle, and high school. It's a complicated plant. Uh, so we would like the firemen uh, to walk the building more regularly and so they can get familiar with the building. And so that's what we're going to be doing there and the other schools in town. And I'm sure the hospital will be part of the same. I'm, I'm sure we're going to do the same thing when the East Chester Middle School construction is done also. Right. Yes, exactly. that, that's, that's there is more. I mean, it's a fairly common thing, but it's, it's more important now because of the changes that have taken place. It's not, you know, we want to try and make sure we get everybody in there. Uh, I do recall, you know, it wasn't that long back that, you know, some of these schools, it wasn't such a big issue because they always had so many problems with their alarm systems. We seem to be going there a few times a week, so we knew our way around. And Bronxville is one of those facilities that you can easily get lost in, and that's with the lights on. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're, he's, he's putting that in place on top of dealing with the uh, regular inspections and work and a very full schedule this month with Fire Prevention Month. Um, reaching out to uh, quite a few children and basically any group that's interested in a fire department visit just uh, reach out through uh, fire headquarters or fire prevention and we'll set something up uh, station five work we've heard some talk you know it's still progressing quite well i know there was some optimistic uh, dates thrown out last time of course we know that the the kitchen cabinets are the biggest hold up right now because they're being fabricated to order they're full stainless steel so that's a little more involved than it you know it's not just something you pick up at the local home depot so uh it looks like it slowed down after quite a whirlwind but it's because we're getting into that finishing work the detail stuff that just is a little slower going and you might not have 20 people working there one time it'll be a couple of uh mechanics you know, whether it's the plumber putting in the fixtures in the bathrooms, or, you know, I believe the kitchen and the heat for the lower floors are the big thing right now. The second floor is pretty much in line. Uh, also, later on, I think you have on the table there, um, looking for a, a green light. I've, I've managed to get a few quotes. We've needed some roof work here on Station 3 for quite a while. It has caused some damage to the ceiling inside now, but... Uh, I've gotten a few quotes uh, that to, to make a proper repair. We'll, we'll move on that. And that'll come up later. Okay. Um, in general, just uh, it's been a lot of extensive work going on in the front office, as we heard. Uh, yes, we need some other people, but between yourself, Chairman Winters, uh, and even the other commissioners, uh, extensive amount of time has been put in doing administrative work. Uh, I thank John. Uh, Malasardi and even the part-time workers, Doug Maeda and Mary Lou. It, it's been a handful, but a, a lot is getting done. I'll just ask maybe um, the end of the meeting that we remember the fellow town employee, uh, Mr. Farella, Nicholas Farella, who passed uh, very tragically. Just keep him in our thoughts and his family, and that'll do for now. Mm. Okay. Good point. Okay, so uh, thank you, Chief. Uh, Deputy Treasurer's report, John. Uh, I know you just were on the podium for quite a while at the last meeting, so. Um. Um, the Treasurer's report for the month of September um, indicates currently we have a surplus now in the budget of $821,428. Um, 
And um, we have a let me total budget. Let me start again. We have a total budget surplus of eight hundred and twenty-one thousand four hundred and twenty-eight dollars. We have a shortfall on the revenue side of one hundred and seventy-two thousand one ninety-seven. And that's a timing issue. We have not collected all of the real estate taxes. It's still 150,000 and change that were left, less than 1%. Um, and we have, we're under budget on the expense side by 990,000. Um, the, the expenses to date, um, we're gonna address some of those expenses tonight with the budget transfers that are in front of you. Um, there were four there, totaling 476,000. Um, they're going to be movements to cover professional consultants. That's for the front office of 100,000. Uh, we're gonna move money to the disabled firefighters line of 130,000. Um, and that's to cover a settlement with a firefighter earlier in the year. Um, we're gonna clean out the retro pay account that was in the budget uh, and we're going to take 200,000 and clean that line to zero since we're done with retro pay and uh, we're going to correct or adjust the life insurance lines to reflect the insurance we pay to local 916 every year that's lumped up in the uh, in the life insurance other um, you know through today or you know what we know of as of today uh, we look to be in good shape going into year end. Um, what do you want? The bill, the bills are up there tonight. They total four hundred and something thousand dollars. I don't have the exact number in front of me, but in that number, um, the perma bills in there, the quarterly. What is it? You got four hundred and sixty thousand nine hundred thirty-three dollars. Four hundred sixty-one thousand eighty-one cents. Yeah. In that number is included the perma bill for one hundred and one thousand for the quarter. The night shift bill, the monthly medical for 157,000 and change. It looks um, like you might have a couple, like some overrun because of the time period. We have like maybe some are like a two month charge. We catch up on Verizon it. was a high one. Is um, we also have the certiorari I spoke to in the earlier meeting. Fifty. Uh, Fifty-five thousand. So there are some large items in tonight's bills when you go through them. Um, but as we head into the last couple of months of the year, we appear to be in very good shape. You know, um, there's still certiorari's on the, uh, the horizon that are still coming at us um, that we haven't quite got that we'll be ending up paying probably before year end. But uh, the bank wrecks are up there with the, uh, the commissioners. I, I figured I'd save a few trees and not make copies of them. It's about 50 pages um, for their review. But overall, we've made some progress in the, you know, the business office. And uh, John, do you have a resolution that you want us to draft, or a, a, a something to show where we're moving the monies from line to line? I thought you had it up there. I'm looking. Oops, sorry. Um, I might. I had so much paperwork up here tonight. I got overrun with paperwork. Okay, here you go, gentlemen. Pass those down. Okay. I could read it. It's a bunch of transfers. Thank you. Okay, the um, So just what we're doing, we're, this is just, we're not spending money, we're just moving it between lines. That's correct. Okay, that's easy. So there's money in the budget to pay these expenses, basically. Okay. So, um, okay, do you want to recap it or do you want me to recap no, it? No, you want me to read them or just recap it? I don't, you know. Um, why don't you recap them and we'll make a resolution to adopt your recap based on your write up here? And that'll be easy enough to do. Because we're not spending any money, we're just moving it. Um, Anybody object to that? No, just just to uh, reference the line. All right. So on, uh, go Asking ahead. For a motion to approve budget transfers totaling four, excuse me, four hundred seventy-six thousand six hundred twenty-five dollars uh, to cover. 
Okay, 100 from EMT line, uh, $100,000. From uniform firefighters line, $130,000. Um, from that's the uniform firefighters, 207A disabled firefighter of 130,000. And there was that, that was a settlement from a, a lawsuit that was ongoing for many, many years. Um, what else am I reading here, John? We have to you take another hundred thousand, hundred one thousand from uniform firefighters, firefighters. Uh, um, 33,000 from auditing, from auditing and longevity, 66,000. And that, that's going into the line that was called retro pay in the budget. Okay. Because we, the number came in higher than the number that was in the budget, so we're just clearing it out now. Okay, so we're moving uh, on to, a, we're moving to retro pay line number 118A, $200,000. We're moving 46625 to insurance other line number 418B. 418B. 418B with it. Right. That's, that's local 916 life insurance. Okay. Anybody have any questions or comments? We have a motion to that? I'll make the motion to that. In fact, anybody want to second it? Or? I'll second it. Okay. So, Winter first. Richie Stiegelman, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, John. Aye. So, uh, and we have your. Bank recs up here for us to walk through. I didn't make copies. It's just what we'll do is Jerry will post them. We'll we'll post them on on the, on the website, hopefully. And those are the month of August. Okay, so we're a month behind. We haven't got. We're just getting September's in now, so we're always one month behind. So this when I say website, I mean internal drive. It's not a website. It's our drive. So, okay, sounds good. Any other questions for John? Alrighty, thank you, John. Um, and the members can review the bills as they pass them around. Mike, if you want to pass those around. Committee reports, career firefighters. Uh, I think that's Mr. Baker. Yes, we uh, had a meeting. I don't remember the exact day. What was it, Jerry? It was uh, 12th. 12th, I think. I thought it was very productive. I'm sure we'll hear more from the union afterwards. But uh, we have another meeting scheduled for... For November 5th, and we're working out a few of the issues. Um, we're going to make it a regular meeting if we need to. If not, we'll just have it sort of scheduled. But I, I thought it was productive. How about you? Yep. We worked out a lot of stuff, and, and we'll be discussing some stuff. And we're going executive session today, but no, or no? Uh, we can if you have items to discuss. Yeah, I think we should real quick. Okay, we're going to an executive session afterwards and to discuss. But that's that's the status of that committee. Okay. Um, Volunteer committee, Mr. Stingman? No, I just had one thing to ask Anthony, but he's not here tonight if they had the uh, tax uh, ID number yet. Okay. House and apparatus, uh, Jerry? Um, nothing on apparatus. I mean, Mike just went through, the chief just went through some repairs we did. Everything's up and running. Uh, in reference to house, uh, we're moving along with station five. Right now, um, probably the big thing that we're awaiting is, is the uh, kitchen cabinets, right, because we need a kitchen there. But everything else seems to be uh, completed. The walls are painted. We still need final finish on the floors. We have heating on the third floor, including air conditioning up and running. Uh, we still need to complete the heating down on the apparatus floor as well as the small watch room, uh, the lieutenant's watch room downstairs. And we also have heating downstairs in the um, proposed exercise area down in the basement. So we're waiting to complete all that. Um, we're hoping to still move forward with the November 15th date. Um, the only thing we're wait awaiting right now is the cabinets is really the main right. thing that we're waiting for. And they've been ordered. It's not yeah. on our end. It's on They're actually the supposed to be here already. And we put a pretty nice bathroom in down the bathroom that was down on the apparatus floor. We installed a shower, a really nice looking shower, so if somebody comes back from a job, rather than go upstairs with the gear dirty and smoky, they can shower downstairs uh, in that floor. It allowed us to be able to put that in, so it came out pretty well. Mike designed it and worked out. It's, it's it also really, you know, it's, it's going to be an open, it's an open floor area. The whole pan has been floored and will drain to the back. My real thought was it, it'll double as a, like a decon shower. 
or like a deluge shower. Usually in a case like that, like we have the little <laughs> eye wash, but if a guy were to suddenly get some contamination on doing that price check or something, they could just walk them right in there and open up the showers and rinse them off. It's, it's really just a little safety, and it's a third shower. It can be used as a third shower. And so following up on Station 5, we probably want to notify the, because we're definitely going to be out by November 30th, Regardless, we're going to be up. Well, I've been keeping this um, the Summerfield landlord up to date, and I told him more than likely we'd be done November. And so I would also tell the uh, trailer company we're gone November 30th. They can take the trailer by November 30th. It's pretty. I would think it's virtually because the building is inhabitable now. Pretty much. I mean, it's you have bathrooms and you know you'll be you'll be pretty close to being done six weeks from now, for sure. Yeah. Well. well yeah. Once the finishes are put on the floor, then. So, so we're going to move ahead no matter what. Yeah, we're moving ahead not, no matter what. If the kitchen's not, there will be a give stipend. stipend. There'll be a stipend if That's there's no kitchen. That's fine with me. It'll be cheaper to give a stipend than we'll be to pay another month's month. rent. Yeah. So, tell them we're moving. Uh, and then the other thing is we're repairing the roof on um, the Bronxville Firehouse here. We have three quotes that we're going to look at this evening. Um, we're going to head. Here they go right here. Might as well go. Um, <clears throat> want to pass them on now? Yeah, there's no, no reason not to. I had seen them already, so here, if you guys want to, want to see them. The house has a flat roof in the center, and people who work there know it's been leaking, so we need to get that fixed before it causes more damage. So we're proposing to give it to the lowest bidder. Confident lowest bidder. Pretty much laid out everything that's going to be done, what we need done. Okay. No, they're all pretty close, but there's one that's significantly cheaper. Yeah, it's all much about this, but he's and he's also he's can start tomorrow. He's waiting for the okay. go ahead, and it has been actually leaking. You guys saw this? You saw it already? Okay. So I'd look for a motion to. Oh, you can do it, Terry. Retain Mar. You can pronounce that name. Mariani. Mariani. I can. A uh, motion to retain Mariani Roofers in the amount of twelve thousand nine hundred fifty dollars. <throat> To repair the roof on the Bronxville Firehouse. I'd second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We'll move that one on. <clears throat> they were the low bidder. They were the lowest this bidder is, out of three bids. We had three this bids. This is more, you know, it's, it's quote. It's underneath. It's <coughs> not. It's not the cost that we would have to go out to seal bids. This was really just a matter of getting, you know, at least three written quotes, three uh, three proposals. That's, that's a good point. Okay. People. Yes, I it's it's bidders, not. But even Under procurement, is. we're within that threshold where we really just at least three written right. quotes. But they were it's, the lowest it's quote. Not a, yes. Okay. Okay. So the next is budget and finance. Um, we discussed this earlier this evening. I don't need to go any further on it. Um, O'Connor, Davies, and Munson's and Dobbins finished the 2012 audit. Copies are available. If anybody wants a copy, email um, John Molazari, email the board. We'll send you a copy. We'll fact, we'll just email it off to you. Um, so that's that. We also went out to RFP, as I mentioned earlier, for a new uh, auditing firm. Communications, Com Commissioner O'Hare? I have nothing to say. Anymore. Okay. Uh, Grant Committee, Mr. Mal no, Napolitano? nothing. Uh, health and wellness, anything? Jerry or uh, nothing? And technology, Jerry? Nothing new there. Okay. And communications, I, John has not have anything new for us. Okay. Um, board topics tonight, I'm going to run down the list. Um, we have fire district election. As I mentioned earlier, that will be a uh, December election. We have to have a meeting next week or the following week if board members can give me their availability for dates. I can do it at 8 o'clock in the morning. What we're going to be doing is appointing election chairman and a second person to, uh, you know, there's usually a chairman, co-chairman. And then we, there's a, a bunch of poll watches. We have usually 30 or 40 poll watches. We we uh, retain for the day. Um, every year it's the same dedicated people who tend to do that. They, they help us out. They come and they do the poll watching. It's, a, it's pretty much the same group every year, and they're wonderful for helping us do it. We've reached out to most of them already. Uh, we're going through the list, and they, it looks like they're going to continue to help us. So we're going to have a meeting in the next week or two weeks. So it'll be early in the morning probably because I think that fits the schedule for some folks. And we'll... Uh, just select a chairman and a um, 
and we'll uh, elect the polling places. The polling places, I don't think there'll be any difference from the polling places prior, which are uh, the town. Let me get my list. Um, uh, I don't have them in front of me, but we had the uh, generally it's the Bronxville Village Hall, it's the um, Tuckahoe Community Center, yes, it's uh, East Chester Town Hall, it's Chester Heights Firehouse, and it's Leroy Gregory Post is the general places. We have to reach out to those five venues and see if they're still willing to allow us to use those venues, and we'll do that in the next week, and then, um, and so that's what we'll be doing. And anybody who's interested in running for fire commissioner, they have to tell us by, I believe it's November 20th. I had my sheet here a minute ago. No, it's the 20th, I believe, Jerry. I can tell you, <clears throat> I can tell you that Leroy Gregory is fine. Yeah. Um, I'm on the committee. Yeah. yeah. I had my election, I had election printout, but um, it's definitely December 10th, and I believe it's the 20th is the November 20th when you have to have your petitions in. And it, your petition consists of basically 25 signatures and you get, uh, we'll give you a copy of the petition to submit if you want one. It's 11-20-2013. If anyone is interested, there's a petition uh, on the East Chester website under public forums. You can go there and download the petition. All right, and the, the date is November 20th. You have to have the petition to the firehouse by. So the petition to the firehouse by November 20th, the election is um, December 10th. There's only a 20 day really campaign window. And this is why we're, we lobbied to change the election to a more reasonable time. So anybody interested in running, totally volunteer, no compensation, uh, it's pure public service and contact any of the board members or, um, and you know we'll fill you in or any passport members call contact any of the passport members um, and ask them you know you, there's a number of them in the community so that's that no, I just lost my agenda um, I'm gonna do my agenda while I'm shuffling all these papers do you have an agenda there Jerry no, I don't want it online okay I found it Okay, so fire district election we discussed and we'll call a meeting. Car 2102 replacement. Car 2102 is the man, command car used by the fire district. The current, I believe it's a 2005 right now, um, so it's roughly eight years old. To replace this car is probably going to take eight to ten months to get a new vehicle in by the time we go out for bid. So I'm looking for the board to authorize uh, the chief to, to go out for bid for a new car. The specs have been pretty much drafted, uh, and we're going to be giving those specs to the law firm who will put it into a proper bid package with the legal ease attached, and we'll put it out for public bid uh, if we need to. The The box might have to go out for public bid. The chassis we can probably buy. I'm not sure how we're going to do it. It'll but be all one thing. All one thing? Okay, so um, does it, any objections to the chief going out for public bid? No objection. No objection. Okay. So, Chief, go out and contact Mary Lou uh, Conroe's office. Uh, Cheryl in that office will handle the. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll she'll handle this, the I'll bid get specs. the package out to her and just explain. You know, we just need the, the legal ease cover. She'll, and she'll give you the cover and we'll send it back out. Put it into the uh, ad. That's As, all good. Uh, the current one's 2007. It's it's not. What was a five? You drive a five. It's five years old. No, no. All three of them were purchased the same time. The 2007. Oh, really? Okay. Um, CPAT was a class coming up in December. The county is looking for us to see how many firefighters we had. My originally thought was we we're going to be looking to retain four f firefighters. That number may vary now. Um, so I think we want to, we can have a discussion, but does anybody object us telling the county between four and six firemen will be looking into CPAT? I don't know if we have to give them an exact number. Why don't we leave it at four and six? I think they just want a, an idea that we are interested in, in the ballpark number because they're looking to uh, set up for the CPAT. Because next year we're losing a number. Uh, and we're already down four at this point, right, Sean? I said we're at least four. Yeah. We? So if we give them a number between four and six, at least they'll be able to judge 
how large of a class they're going to have. And so, is any objections to that? No. So, I would, the Chief, you're authorized to tell them between four and six. ID cards and ID system. Uh, this was somewhat shocking. Um, we checked with Westchester County to see if there's a uniform ID card for fire departments in Westchester County. You would think Westchester County would have a uniformed ID card for all the different fire departments. So if they go on a mass casualty scene, people have the same ID cards and they could tell a fraudulent one from a not fraudulent one. And Westchester County does not have a uniformed ID card system for firefighters in Westchester County. They recently put one in place for the police departments in Westchester County. They have not done so for the fire departments. So um, it's been bouncing around for years. They it's been can't. bouncing. So, I mean, to me, I found it somewhat shocking that they didn't that this doesn't exist because we were looking at buying a new ID system, and then it was like, okay, what ID system we're going to buy? Why should we buy something unless the county has similar? You know, so when we go somewhere that it's recognized as a standard card, but we learn differently. So um, I still think we should move forward. We can't wait for the county and try to get something that is on a, um, a, a national standard or, a, or a, let me maybe use a New York City Police a New York City Fire Department as a standard or whatever they use, match theirs or something. But uh, we need to get, address the ID cards. We need to have professional ID cards and, uh, and move that forward. So I don't think there's any objection on the board to that. I think that's something we want to move along. Station 5 progress we already talked about and the move-in date, permissive referendum for the moving the Station 5 money. We'll talk about that at next month's meeting just because I've run out of time tonight to deal with it. Um, we have to, we're going to move the money from the, um, we want to do it all in one shot when we spend the money so we don't have to advertise three times that we're doing a permissive referendum to move money. So we'll do it next month's meeting. And that by that time we should have. We didn't advertise last time because we want to do it in one shot. We haven't moved the money. No. Well, we advertised. We advertised everything we need to advertise. We haven't moved the money for the permissive referendum because we're waiting to do all three. In other words, if we do every time we pay them permissive referendum rev, we have to advertise. So we're just waiting to do it in one shot for the whole project. Okay, rather than running three bills because the the airs are not inexpensive for legal for legal notices. Um, payroll service with an ongoing problem that we're going to try to um, find a payroll service. I just have it on my list of items that we need to discuss, but we already know that um, the roof we've already discussed. We have a proposal from and T. I'll solicit one. But we need. Yeah, we, we we received one proposal. We need to get more. Um, so that I've just walked through all the items I had on my little list of things to address at tonight's board meeting and the board, not my list, but items that were also given by other board members. Um, does anybody else have any board topics to add? Um, going to go visit the Westchester Board of Elections might be too soon. But I, I would like to see if we can create a, a uh, citizen action committee to go and visit them to figure out the logistics on how we go about doing the election for next year. I had a, I had a uh, chat with them today uh, just, to, just to, uh, to ask them what their prospect is for the election. They were very welcoming. They were, they were hoping somebody from the district would reach out and communicate with them and then um, they would like to deal with the, from us to them, from municipality to municipality, and then we can have an advisory committee um, put in place with them. But as soon as they get the blessing of who it is and who we want in, on that committee, and so they want us to communicate with them on a formal basis of who we're asking to be um, communicating that, that, that project. And the thinking there is, between now and next November, when we change the election to November next year, not this year, there'll be some setting up work to do, some organization work to do, and some, um, some working back and forth. And it sounds like they can be somewhat accommodating for us and maybe helpful for us as far as expediting the process. They seem fairly open, but they, 
uh, I told him rather than to confuse the public between this year and next year, right after the December election, we'll step up that whole process. So we're not, they're, we're not sending him this message about when the election is this year. So right after the December election, we'll step up the process of organizing um, a group of citizens, the, hopefully the ones that have been active in changing this um, law and date to help organize the election process for next year. Does that make sense? Yep. So, um, so that's all I have for any board member comments or any board member before we move on to other items on the board list. Okay, <clears throat> local 916 report, Sean. Good evening, Sean Stewart, President, Local 916, and a resident of the North End of East Chester. I don't know, I might have missed it, Dennis, but under your, you know, board topics, uh, generator bid, RFP, did you mention that? It went out to bid. Oh, it did go out to bid. Yeah, yeah it's advertised okay, already. Sorry, I, I was looking at other things, and I didn't know if that went out. Yeah, we, were, we, we put that out, for, that was been advertised uh, last week, it was out for advertising. Right. Um, just about the budget, I know uh, John had said we're under budget which is a good thing because there's only two and a half, I guess, what do you got, two and a half months to go um, in this year. And I also noticed that he said we're, we're, you're closing out an account on retro money. So my question is, if everybody's got their retro money, does that include everybody that retired prior to us signing this contract, whether they're out on a normal retirement or a 207A retirement? Good question. Um, there is some... There, we have is a, a number of issues with, there's a number of retirees. I'll say the number is roughly 20. Um, and they have not been notified yet as to all of them, whether they're 207A, non-207A, whoever they are. They haven't been notified yet. They're gonna, we, the lawyer drafted a letter that needs some editing. And uh, that letter will go out to the retirees hopefully within the next week uh, just because we want to move the process along not hopefully it's going out we just need to move it along um, and we're going back 12 years and so anybody who didn't pay their health care on the family plan we're going to be seeking repayment so you also have some of those members on 207A who look like they're due money from 207A adjustments at the same time there, um, they we look like they owe us money on the health care, so it's a balancing act, and we'll have to have the discussion. Right. And as you know, you don't represent the two hundred seven. You don't represent the retirees. Yes, but under a different umbrella. And I know we had this conversation the other night, and they have to make up their mind what they're doing. Again, that's neither here nor there. I just when I heard John say you were closing the account, I just wanted to make clear some people are old money maybe oh, no 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 we're not saying we're not we're not we have to we'll have to work that out okay but in our mind there's a balance to do right. here that that's going to be handled with lawyers i understand that. yeah I totally get that um you mentioned station five i just want to bring this up real quick and i did we had a nice conversation uh with jerry and, and steven uh, you know guys are asking about I know there's not a date, but the other concern that came up was leaving the uh, physical fitness area, gym facility in the back because of the height level of the basement with the Stairmaster and certain weight exercises because where the room is boxed off, if you put the Stairmaster in, myself or Bobby Collin, who's here, definitely will not be able to use it. And it's just a height issue. So the curiosity was if they were gonna remain in that back room of the firehouse, no. Uh, as the fitness area. No. Stairmaster, you may have to keep upstairs because there is a height issue. Um, this was set up short. They had a liaison part of the process from the start. The back room is going to be gear storage, gear lockers. Um, the downstairs was set up as an exercise room. Yes, it's not great height for a standing military press, but you know something like the Stairmaster that's in that house probably will have to stay upstairs or outside that room because of the height issue. But the whole intention was this was set up for the exercise room down in the basement. It's got its own heat and air conditioning. Okay. Um, and the back was for the turnout gear. That was from the, the final set of plans that went out. Okay. 
Okay. Well, just let, let us finish this, and we'll worry about that later. Right. We I'm really just can't. asking. You, know, you yeah. don't see me going one way or the other. I'm just right. I have to ask <clears> the question. Um, Understood. Okay. So the, we we know about the stair it was right. Okay. Never thought about it. We actually could have made that room all the way in the back where the old kitchen would have been, and we wouldn't have had the height issue. But we weren't thinking at the time. It wasn't brought up to us at the time either. So. Right. Um, also, with the budget, real quick, we know the mechanic is retiring. I did have a little conversation with Dennis, so I don't know if you guys have brought up what we're going to do moving forward because he'll be gone at the end of the month, basically. And I don't know if you guys had a conversation over that. We um, haven't. Okay. And then uh, lastly on the budget, and then I just got a couple of the bullet points, is we have Dr. Max Sullivan. The assumption is the way things are going, we're coming to the end of the year. Is the department still retaining his services and we're using Max Sullivan? as the department doctor for now we're currently using him and we uh he's we're probably wearing on our welcome there and we um i think we reached out maybe to, to yourself and said hey if you can find if you know of a, a medical service that other departments are using uh we're perfectly willing to open that up and and see if anybody in other words we need to find a uh, a practitioner and you know, I, I. But until that time, we're still using. Oh yeah, no, he's okay. been he's right. been he's been doing all the stuff he's supposed to be doing. Okay. That's fine. Um, that's it. Um, just and again, these are a couple quick bullet notes. Um, I would like to thank the uh, the career committee, uh, Stephen Baker and Jerry Napolitano. We met on September seventeenth <clears throat> and uh, October first, and we're going to meet again on the fifth. And as, as Stephen said, we're going to meet the first Tuesday of every month, eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, we've made some headway on a couple of items. Um, we've still got a ways to go, but it's a, it's a start. And we also want to acknowledge, you know, we needed to talk to them first. We have no problem the chief jumping in at any time during these meetings, whether we're having them at headquarters or down at Tuckahoe. Um, but we did make some headway. And again, thank you for uh, meeting with us. And uh, it was actually Stephen came up with the idea, and Jerry agreed that pick a date. We'll stick with it. If we need to meet, great. If not, you know, happy day. We can go about our business. But again, thank you. Uh, uh, this time of year, um, I don't know if it was brought up. I was on vacation in September. It might have been an afterthought. We do our annual fundraising, and I would just like to get permission from the board if we could send out our annual fundraising letter. Um, basically, what we do is uh, I have the letter with me. I can leave it with you um, to look at. Um, but we'd like to get it out as soon as possible. Basically, it just uh, says what we're raising the money for. For example, um, we give out local scholarships to the three high schools. Um, in the past couple of years, we raised over $43,000 for the uh, Child Abuse Prevention Center up in White Plains. I don't have the total to date, um, including this year, but the last three years we were able to raise $5,000 for uh, uh, breast cancer awareness between raffle tickets, uh, the dunk tank, and selling of the T-shirts. Uh, we do Operation Light Bulb, which is to help home repairs for the elderly, um, and a few other odds and ends. Um, so I just wanted to know if we could have permission to send our fundraising letter out. We hope it was dated September. We had a little problem with the printer, so we'd like to get it out by the end of the month if that's okay. It's the same cause as you always do, right? The same. Business. Same thing. It's not nothing different, but you know, we always want to ask permission. So just tell them to pass uh, it around. We'll yeah. Do now. Yeah. You just pass it around to us. We'll do it now. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And also, Sean, are you guys doing the Turkey Bowl this year? Um, it's supposed to it's supposed to be a golf outing. No that would be a better idea. That would be a very dodgeball. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, even a chess uh, tournament might be safer. <laughs> yes, we are having a turkey bowl. No. It is the Saturday after Thanksgiving. It's up at Handel Field at 1 o'clock. Um, yeah, we were supposed to make some changes. Um, hopefully everybody will be okay this year, knock on wood. I haven't got it at 100%, but the reason why they wanted to go through with it, based on the tragedy that happened with the worker at the DPW, um, the cops reached out to us, we were still going to do something and thought this would be a good idea on the holiday to uh, help raise money for the DPW worker that was tragically killed. Um, we have our union meeting tomorrow night, we're going to discuss it, um, and I'll have more information next month, but that's where we're heading. Yeah, it's just that my own view of watching this year after year is 
you guys get older and the firemen get the cops get younger. Yes, I know. And uh, <laughs> it doesn't seem to do well for you guys. And then, uh, you know, the score wise, I can't, I can't change the score. Oh. It is what it is. And uh, we all look at. And then different. there's people that you know we end up losing for some period of time. So we are looking at different venues. I know the chief mentioned golf. You're gonna laugh. We did come up with an idea. If everybody saw the movie Dodgeball. And it wasn't just a dodgeball game, but you have to come up with a theme. What is your team going to dress as? So, yeah, we're working on some other things, but this was something that came up, and uh, we're going to discuss it tomorrow. But that's where we're leaning. That's Saturday after Thanksgiving up at Handel Field, and I'll have more particulars next month. This will be an inside joke. Golf carts and no golf carts. (laughs) (laughs) All right, but thank you. Um, In the past, down here in Bronxville, as, as our meeting quarters, um, we, uh, Billy Wiggleman, who is an EMT instructor, um, has run a uh, CPR and first aid class. He's done it a couple times down at Station 3 for fen- friends and family of the fire district and, you know, uh, relatives. Uh, I don't have a date yet. We've done it twice before. We would just, even though it's our quarters, we would just like to get permission. Uh, it might not be... This year it might be in January, but once I get more information, we just wanted to get it out there and we'll get a date and we can open it up to people within the fire district. Uh, Billy's willing to, uh, you know, uh, teach the class. There'll probably be some type of fee for it, but we just wanted to ask permission. And again, as we get more information, as the date gets closer, I, again, I don't know if it's going to be in November or December or after the first of the year, if he can run that class down there. We've done it a couple of times. No, I think it's a, it's a, to me personally, I think it's a great idea if you can run a CPR class. Um, I don't know if my, my status is valid or not still, but I usually go to those classes. Um, and defibrillator, does he do defibrillator as well? Or is it just CPR? Yeah, he does, a, he does a nice job. And, uh, usually does he do defibrillator, though, too? The does he do defibrillator? Do, do defibrillator, too? Uh, it's mostly, uh, it's been CPR and first aid. I can find out from him if that's where he's going, because um, I think they've changed the standards, and that might have become part of the uh, renewal. I believe, I believe the defibs have been rolled into the basic CPR course. They'll touch on it because they're all... Most of what you're seeing now is really automatic. It's just a matter right. of starting CPR, a couple of minutes, and then going. applying the pads. And uh, I believe that is incorporated into the whole thing. Because yeah, I would be, in, personally, I would be interested in, in attending right. that if Once he had I it. Or, date, or, and he might even do it. CPR. It's dependent on, you know, the turnout. That, uh, CPR actually requires like so an annual. If you can notify the board, I know in my community they've actually asked for it. And actually, I referred Wiegelman to do in the community. Right. So I would like to make a big push for it. We can aver- you know, put it in the paper and stuff and make okay. it a community right. effort. I just, yeah. And again, I just want to, we just giving you the courtesy, we just didn't want to all of a sudden have 30 people upstairs and, hey, why didn't you, you know, let us know or, you know, we could get it out to the public, but that's fine. I don't know what the fee is. He doesn't charge a lot. It's to cover the paperwork and, you know, a few odds and ends. It's not that expensive, so. If you give me the details, yeah. I'll put it out on the okay. website and everything and... The only thing he might, um, I know, like you said, he did a couple with uh, like <clears throat> friends or family members. If he's going to reach out too much, you want to just you know, let you or let the insurance company know that there'll be people coming taking this course. Okay, and in, in the last thing, I know last month, Dennis, you said we want to move on, and we do. I know the union got a grant for approximately 115. Well, just, just hear me out because I heard there were comments. And I want to correct the people with their comments. And I know some of them aren't here. The union got a a free grant for $115,000. There was comments made that the politician or politicians lost it. That is not the case. I want it understood that the fire district lost the grant, A, which is okay. Things happen. My question is, moving forward, are we going to pursue pursuing this going forward are we going to look to get this back and i know it moved from one office to another office and if we're not fine then we'll move forward Uh, but it did come up and i was questioned that the politician or politicians didn't come through and they came through big time the problem is as a district the district lost the grant not the union not the, the the politicians and i wish they would ask and i hate to keep bringing it up and like you said we've got to move forward 
But if we're going to move forward, are we going to look to go to this other office and collect it? If not, then it's gone. If, if the grant was to come up again the way it did last time, I believe we now have the legal structure or the legal representation or whatever you want to call it that can process this stuff rather quickly, turn it around, and move on rather quickly. So we don't have the same um, holdback we used to have as far as processing legal documents. They get done pretty quickly when it comes to a, a, something that has to go through the legal department. That's my view. Okay. Like I said, I would, I, I'd just like to get together with you after because I don't know if we are getting the same idea. I would agree that this was not one of those just cardboard checks. The money was there. The money was there. We, we were missing one piece of paper that we never got. There was a long delay because of the previous governor holding the money back. They opened it up again. I thought we were getting a book to cash in. There was still a letter missing. And then it got moved to a totally different agency. I'm under the understanding that we basically had to start from scratch and reapply for a whole new grant. Now, you might have other information. I'd love to sit down with you because okay. I'll, you, I'll, and, I'll you and Casey and you guys, yeah, I'll give you, you guys did the, all the legwork. <clears throat> you did all the work. I was led to believe that we had to start from scratch and reapply. Double check. Okay. It was the dormitory authority, and now it's with the economic okay. development authority. The money was reappropriated somewhere else. And I don't know if it's because of Sandy or what. But. No, and then, if I could have two minutes of the board's time and the Morning. chief's time at the end of the meeting, Absolutely. I got two quick personnel issues that uh, I need to share with you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Sean. Thank you very much. Uh, before you go, I'd just like, um, if I may, take a moment. Uh, I'd like you to, if you could, can, uh, convey my appreciation to the members. Uh, they did a great job at the um, carnival with the dunk tank and the uh, breast cancer tent. And they made me feel very welcome, and my family as well. My kids were talking about it, and it was very, very much appreciated. I spent, I actually got in trouble with my wife because I spent a little bit too much time there when I should have been doing other things. I had a great time with uh, Firefighter George and Firefighter Palumbo, among others. Okay. So thank you. It was much appreciated. I thought you guys were doing great, great work there. Right. I'll have a final report on that next month. I don't know. Like I said, up until this year, we raised 5000 The public's been very supportive of this, and I'll have a total tally for the last four years and what we raised this year. But thank you. Did you take a turn in the dunk tank? I did, okay. was not asked, so oh. I didn't have to make that decision. You know, I would have if, if it would have helped out the cause. Okay, so we have the volunteers aren't here tonight, so there can't be a volunteer report. Anybody have any new business to talk about with the board? Anybody on the board have anything new to discuss? Uh, an opportunity for the public to address the board? Does anybody want to comment? Uh, Mary Smith. Yes, good evening. Mary Nagel Smith, Bronxville. Um, I would like to correct maybe a, I understand there's a public misconception about the election law that was passed. The election law that was passed does not have the Westchester Board of Elections administering the East Chester Fire District election as it is written, as it was passed. I think that is a very common misperception and that needed to be corrected. Um, between now, I think now the bill that was passed provided the voters with a better situation. We have longer hours, we have more sites, we have absentee ballots, we're more accessible to the disabled, a lot of good things. It is better than it was. It is not the best. Between now and a year from November, I'm delighted that this board is thinking of working with the Board of Elections to provide the East Chester voters with an efficient and cost-effective election, which is what the voters wanted. It was very much clear. Anyone who went to the, uh, the meeting, the town meeting with Senator Latimer and Assemblywoman Paulin, knew that the overriding sentiment was to have the Westchester Board of Elections assumed the administration of that election. That was not 
the language that was in the bill that eventually became law. So between now and next November, <coughs> we hope that with the efforts of the board and maybe a citizens committee working with the Board of Elections, we can partner with them and have them work with the East Chester Fire District Board and work together to run this election as a model of efficiency and cost efficiency. There's no reason why people who go to vote would have to vote in one machine, get a card, and then wait online again after working long hours or being disabled or being elderly, whatever your circumstances might be. It is not smart, and we're better than that. So I'm very happy that we'll, we'll be working toward that end. In the meantime, December 10th, we're on the regular election, the regular election sites, the regular election hours, and um, you know, I think between now and November 14th, we can have hopefully a model election. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. With the county, we needed their approval. They're going to need to sign off on this election, but then, but we need to work with them to try to incorporate more of the election process. So. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Wolf. I may follow up on the point, Chairman Winter, that you made just a moment ago and uh, ask you a question. Sure. Have you been able to reach either of the two commissioners of the Westchester County Board of Elections to find out what their opinion is going to be on uh, when signing off and writing of holding the elections you know, at the November general election day. Um, I reached the, the, their administrative assistant for the fellow with the uh, long, long uh, I forget his name, but. Lafayette? Lafayette, yeah, Lafayette. I wrote, spoke to his administrative assistant today. I explained to her uh, she said they were waiting for us to communicate with them, and I explained how we were hoping that the we would start a full dialogue right after the December election, so there's no confusion. Um, they have no problem with that, and so uh, we're gonna, right after the December election, we're going to meet with them and and have a dialogue and try to move it forward. I, I don't see any. It doesn't sound like there was going to be any resistance whatsoever on their part. They sounded completely helpful. Thank you. And to follow up on the point that Mrs. Smith was discussing a moment ago, uh, <clears throat> the, if we were going to have a unified type of election where there wouldn't be two sets of registers, two sets of uh, uh, election type machines and so on, so that would require additional legislation to be enacted. Um, I think that'll be a discussion point. I think that'll be a discussion point with Westchester County Board of Elections, um, and it may require additional legislation, and we may have time to get that legislation done next year prior to the November election date. Remember, look at this year, we passed this thing prior to the November election date, so it's possible next year if there's any tweaks that the Westchester County Board of Elections decides to make and suggests uh, we can do that. And so there's nothing to prevent us from saying, oh, it would be better if we, instead of having a 20-day window, for an example, right now we have a 20-day window between election day and petition date. If that window matched the town election, and let's say it was July 15th, what I think is the town election date is July 15th. I'm not sure, but I think it is. If we had a November, a July date to have your petitions turned in, well, then there'd be really no reason why we couldn't go on the townwide ballot. So, um, as you know, after bills are passed by uh, the legislature, they sometimes wait 
in the index clerk's office for months before they are sent to the governor for his action. So better sooner than later. Correct. I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah, but there's still, we're moving in the right direction. That's all that matters. We're moving in the right direction. And I think it's because of the, in the help we got from a lot of residents, we're moving in the right direction. So, and the board. Thank you. So, um, anybody else would like to public comment? So we're going to meet um, probably in a week or two to, to hammer out the election uh, members and the election committee. And as far as for the 2013 election, not 2014, the December election. And so um, we are going to adjourn to executive session. We have bills to, to go over here. I'm just finishing up going through them. Did I, did I pass them enough down? Okay, here's more. And they're not that many, actually. They're thick, but they're not that many. Um, and most of them are repeats. So any other comments? And we're just going to go flip through the bills, and then we're going to adjourn to uh, executive session for <coughs> personnel matters. And we're going to cl we'll close the meeting in honor of uh, Nicholas Ferrillo. Um, do gentlemen go through the bills? Any comments? Any questions? Just to see the one we the marked. Uh, Mark paid. Sorry, yeah. paid right. Otherwise, they're all fine. All fine? On my end. Okay, I'll be through here in a minute. I see New York Power, they're going to go up 15%, 12% or something. One that jumped out, I'm seeing these late today, but there was some. Um, I want to look into the water bill uh, for Oregon Avenue. If it's accurate, we have a serious water leak. Okay. I don't see any issues here. You guys see any issues there? Let's just drop something. Oh, it has? There were some changes that were done and some credits back. And once we get other things in line, that should come down still. Because it's still set, it's still the wrong setup. All right, we're going to do that in a second, as soon as we do the bills. No, I banged my hand. John, how much was it? Uh, does anybody have the invoice for the total bill amount that we're going to be approving here? The top page. The cover. It's the signature page. Should be on the signature page. Uh, do I still have more bills here? I'm not, I don't have more. It was on top in the beginning. Okay. You have the motions too in there. Yeah. Hold on. Over there. Oh, you have the list right in front of you, Dennis. I got it in front of me. No, no, on the table. Okay. Right that there. Check the last page. Yep. So with the bills we're going to be approving is $460,933.81. Um, as John mentioned earlier, the majority of that was made up by um, health care payments, PERMA payments, and we made a payment to CEBRA contracting, which is not in there. Okay. So. that in this warrant list? Do you want to include this one in this warrant list? I pulled a hamstring. Okay. I was getting hand, but I didn't stretch. Okay. Got some kid doing it. He seems to be enjoying Okay. Does anybody have any questions or any comments? We also have one. Seba's already been paid. That was the... Yeah, Mike is even. Mike is standing.
Okay, so I'm looking for a motion to pay the bills. I make that motion. Okay, Mr. Baker. I second. Second by Richie Stiegelman. First. Second. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 I look for a motion to adjourn to executive session. So moved. Personnel matters. Second. Second. And uh, and insurance problems. And uh, I think we need to call. Yeah. Right now. yeah. Hold on. We are. Moment of silence for Nicholas. Okay. Nicholas Ferrello. Mr. Wolf, one second. We're just while we close the meeting here. Mr. Wolf. Mr. Wolf. Mr. Wolf. Mr. Wolf. Uh, we're going to close the meeting. Uh, there was a tragic accident about a week ago where one of the DPW uh, workers in the town of Eastchester died in a, in a terrible accident. I think we need to close the meeting in honor of that DPW worker with a moment of silence. His name was Nicholas Ferrillo. So I would hope we close that meeting and we'll have a moment of silence.